Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook, but 10 seconds before we get started, I made this video to help you, so please help me if it helps you. It only takes a second or two. It's a great help if you subscribe, like, and or leave a comment down below. That's it. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Jordan here, and today on Fixbook, we'll be taking a look at how to remove and reinstall your brake pads and rotors on a 96 through 2000 Honda Civic. Now, in the past, I've done this video and I used my older, crappier camera. So today I'll be using my newer, nicer camera to improve the video quality for you guys. Well, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, get started and take a look. All right, guys. The tools I used for today's job was a 19 millimeter socket with a breaker bar to get your wheels off. A hammer comes in handy. 12 millimeter socket with a 3 8 ratchet. A 17 millimeter socket with a extended 3 8 ratchet. A big flathead screwdriver and your C-clamp and a pair of measuring calipers. Obviously now, the first thing you gotta do is take your wheel off. So, let's go ahead and uh, break those lug nuts loose. The next thing you do guys is go ahead and lift up the car and I'm gonna show you where to lift it up. All right. You see that little square spot right there? You can go ahead and get your jack set up on that and lift up the vehicle. Alright guys, so now I'm lifting up the vehicle, and um, always remember, you just need to lift it up just enough to get the tire off the ground. Uh, makes things faster, and remember safety comes first, so always use your jack stands. I'll show you where to put those here in just a second. And you should have all your lug nuts loosened up, so go ahead and uh, get those all the way up. There comes one, and it's going to be the same for all those. Alright guys, now setting up your jack stand. Uh, right here under the lower control arm is a good place to put your jack. And I actually don't have with me today my either set of jack stands with me. So just to put a little extra emphasis on how important it is to use a jack stand, I'll be using this ramp here uh, as a uh, last resort kind of jack failure thing. Um, Jacks do fail, so just remember jack stands are very important, and like I said, I'll be using this rhino ramp I'm going to set there under the lower control arm. So, go ahead and get your jack stand in place, and we'll go ahead and take the caliper off. Now, we're working on the right wheel, and I've turned the steering wheel all the way to the right, so we can better see what we're working with here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this caliper bolt here. It's a 12 millimeter bolt head. So go ahead and get your 12 millimeter socket and a 3 8 ratchet, put it on there and let's go ahead and take that bolt off. Now, once you've about got your caliper bolt out, the next thing you'll need is a large flathead screwdriver, just like this. And what you're going to need to do with that is go ahead and uh, find a place here to kind of pry. And what we're going to do by doing that is compress the piston back a little, just a little bit so it makes it easier to pull off here and then so it gives us more room when we go to put the brake pads back in so the it'll slide back on there easier so go ahead and slip this off right here make sure you get that rubber piece off it's gonna have to come off too now if you're just changing the pads you can just kind of lift up and change them like that but it's always a good idea to measure for minimum thickness on your rotor so which you could also do with the caliper just lifted up here but today we're also going to be taking off the rotors as well so we will need to take this all the way off like so and you can just set it right there and we'll go ahead and take these pads off now this next step is the most important step if you're the kind of person that likes to do their own work on their car uh, if you plan on doing your brakes you need to invest in this tool right here this is a pair of calipers, uh, measuring calipers. And you will notice here on this set of calipers, the ends here are just straight. Now, you need to invest in a set of these calipers and what you'll do is go to your local parts store, ask for a set of calipers. Uh, you should be able to buy them there at your local parts store. But make sure they are the kind that have the teeth here on the ends. So you want to be kind of like a claw there because on most rotors, there will be like a little lip here or like a little rust line and that's gonna raise up and it'll give you an inaccurate measurement if you use 
these flat ended calipers. So once you've got your set of calipers with the teeth on the end, what you'll do is you'll take it and you'll close them down here on the rotor. And those little teeth at the end will measure inside here on the rotor and they'll give you a number. Now for example, I believe this rotor has a 19 millimeter limit on it. So anything above 19 millimeters would be acceptable. So I'll stick my set of calipers on here and I'm gonna pull them off. This isn't 100% accurate, but it looks like it's something like 21 millimeters. So that is above minimum thickness and I will not crash and die while driving with these rotors. So make sure you do that unless you wanna crash and die. Just keep that in mind. I wanna put that extra emphasis on there. Uh, next thing we'll look at is removing the actual rotor because some of you guys will need to change your rotor or take your rotor to the local parts store to have it resurfaced. For example, if your brake your brakes are pulsing at highway speeds, your rotor is probably warped. So you'd want to take that to your local parts store and have it resurfaced. A lot of times that's cheaper because you can get it resurfaced for anywhere from like seven to ten dollars. So that's a that's a cheaper alternative to the new rotors. Well, let's uh, go ahead and check that out. Okay guys, now the next fun task we have here is removing these two bolts. Uh, they're 17 millimeters in size. I like to use a bigger ratchet because they're on there pretty good. So you're going to go ahead and get those off. And then once we get those off, we'll be able to take this bracket right here off. You can see it shaking. And then we'll have the fun task of removing the two Phillips head screws, which I actually don't have to do because I'm smart and didn't put them back on. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you what to do for those. So I'm taking this last bolt off here. And they're short little bolts. As you can see, pretty short. So go ahead and just set this off to the side, like so. And now, um, these are what we call uncaptured rotors. Captured rotors, you have to take your axle nut off. But fortunately, these you don't. 